Alrighty. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to call this uh, Monday, August 28th, uh, 2023 meeting of the Lake Havasu City Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to order. We will move on to item number four, call to the public. We will now have an open call to the public for citizens wishing to address the board on issues within the jurisdiction of this board. Your comments must be limited to three minutes or less. If you wish to address an item already on today's agenda, you should wait until that item is announced for a public hearing. At the conclusion of the open, poll, open call to the public, individual members of the board may respond to criticism made by those who address the board, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. However, board members cannot discuss or take legal actions on matters not already on the agenda. With that being said, would anybody like to address the board on call to the public? All righty, seeing none, move on to item number 5.1, approval of the July 24th, 2023 meeting minutes. Looking for a motion. Go ahead. This is Mercedes Kaiser, and I motion to approve. All righty, we have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> All righty. We will move on to item number 6.1, the staff report. Director Keene. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, before I get into my report, I'd like to take a second and introduce our new parks superintendent, Guy Reynolds. And Guy, if you'll come up and just uh, let the board know a little bit about yourself. And Vice Mayor and Chair and Committee members, I'm Guy Reynolds. I'm a longtime resident of Lake Havasu, moved here in 1965. And I'm very proud and honored to be back working in the Parks Department with Director Keene. Uh, my background is uh, Parks and Recreation Facilities Management. Um, I have an extensive uh, and very diverse background in construction and then facilities as well. Um, I was very fortunate enough to start day one in the Parks Department here when it was first uh, created with Dick Samp. And I have a lot of fond memories and I've been back on the job a week and a day. And it's almost like I never left. And um, I have to tell you, I have an excellent team. I'm very proud of them. I've been working with them side by side, and we've been around looking at a lot of things. They're very, very conscious, uh, consummate professionals, and they're doing a really good job. And we have a, a lot of uh, wonderful projects uh, in front of us. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Any questions for the superintendent? Mr. Chair, Go ahead. just wanted to say, um, sorry, can you hear me? Just wanted to say thanks for coming here to introduce yourself, and it's great to meet you, and congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I look forward to working with all of you. And, and again, I'll echo those sentiments. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate your experience. I know there's quite a bit of experience there that comes with you. So um, again, we I know as a board, I can speak for myself as a, as, as a citizen, we're excited to have you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the report. There will be an informational fall fun fair meeting held on Thursday, August 31st at 9 a.m. and another one at 5 p.m. at in room 153-154 at the community center. This is for groups to attend uh, either one of the meetings in order to ask questions and to receive the required paperwork for participation in the fall fun fair. The pool will be closed on Monday, September 4th for the Labor Day holiday. Lake Havasu High School's uh, swim team has some home meets coming up on Thursday, September 7th, Wednesday, September 13th, Thursday, September 14th, and Thursday, September 28th. Our September swim lessons will begin on Monday, September 11th and run through Thursday, September 21st. I'll be holding a lifeguarding in-service on Sunday, September 17th, and our after-school program uh, will have a swimming field trip on Thursday, September 21st. A few events going on in the community center. Uh, Miss, the Miss Lake Havasu City pageant will take place on Saturday, September 9th. Lake Havasu City Constitutional Week event will be held on September 17th. The Eastern Star Bunko will take place on Monday, September 18th. And the Lake Havasu Home and Garden Expo will take place Friday, September 22nd, and Saturday, September 23rd. 
couple of events going on out in the parks. Havasu Skates is hosting an event at the Sarah Park Roller Rink on September 9th. The 9-11 Rededication Ceremony will be held at London Bridge Beach on September 11th. The Suicide Awareness and Prevention Walk will be held at Rotary Park on September 16th. And the Gold Star Mother's Candlelight Ceremony will be held at Wheeler Park on September 24th. Uh, Lake Havasu City Constitutional Week celebration will also be held under the bridge Saturday, September 23rd. Uh, a couple other updates. The week of August 15th, the Arizona State Parks and Trails Board was in Lake Havasu City for a tour of the facilities and their monthly meeting that we did host here. As part of that tour, they viewed the future downtown Catalyst site and Site 6, which are both areas uh, that we have received grant dollars for um, and applying for future grants from Arizona State Parks and Trails. Uh, and I, they were very happy to come out and uh, tour the, in the entire city, all the different assets, not only the ones that the, the city manages, but um, the other state parks. I know they went down and visited uh, at contact point with the, the Sheriff's Department excuse me, and we're down at Cattell Cove. They really kind of explored the entire area. Uh, and then during the meeting, their monthly meeting itself, um, they had, we had representatives in from Parker, Bullhead, and Kingman to talk about some of their grant projects as well. So it was a very, uh, very good opportunity to get to meet the Arizona State Park Trails Board and have that conversation with them. Uh, the HVAC project at the Aquatic Center is mostly finished. Uh, they're working on a few punch list items. Uh, all the units are up and running, uh, and the facility is much more comfortable. So if you have any opportunity to stop by the pool area, you'll definitely feel a big difference. Uh, it's approximately 85 to 88 degrees in the pool area with a 40 to 50% humidity. So quite a reduction in there. Uh, it feels very nice. Uh, we got lots of comments. Uh, about the difference in there. So everything uh, in that end is, is up and running. Again, they're just working on a few punch list items uh, to close out the project. So um, that concludes my report. With that, I'll take any questions. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments for the director? I'll make one. Um, from some of my students, they were very, very happy to hear about the pool and, and they're excited and they said it's awesome. So thank you guys for doing that because they said it's like night and day difference. So thank you. Um, I'll just uh, comment on the um, Arizona State Parks and Trails Board that was here in town. I was part of that meeting or part of the tour the day before and then I attended the meeting. Um, and I will say it was uh, it was great to see them here. It was great to have them come see our community. Um, I every every member of that board was was amazing they were they were all very in tune with very like-minded thoughts of of this board um and you know it was it was very interesting to see how uh i guess let's say unaware they were of some of the rural communities so um it was good that they were able to come down and see it firsthand they were able to see our lake firsthand our, our community the projects that the city's doing um and they were very supportive of of the things that that need to get done and that we want to get done as a board and as a city and a community. And it was also very awesome to see the other cities around us, Parker and Bullhead and Kingman, all tapping into the same grant funds and, and doing great things up there as well. So it was definitely great to be part of that. And, and again, I want to thank, thank the entire board and the Arizona State Parks and Trails staff and Director Broshide for, for bringing them down, there, down here and, and really intermingling with the community. It was awesome. So, and thank you guys for, for taking them out on the tour and I know it was a little warm midday when you guys were standing out there at the Catalyst Project, but um, it was definitely much needed, so thank you. Any other questions, comments? Alrighty, seeing none, we'll move on to our public hearings. Start off with item 7.1, discussion update of the downtown Catalyst site. Director Keene. Okay, thank you. So we've had a couple changes uh, since we, we, we last uh, saw really a picture uh, at this at the board level and um, some some discussions that have have taken place with dig studios mainly around um, really again trying to open up as you can follow my cursor this northern area to to really have as much space and usable up there as as possible so um, a couple things that were do that we we were able to do um, there in the original design there was two additional trees here that we did remove 
Um, again, the intention is to open up this area. These two boxes here are picnic tables, so they can be moved. They're, that's Those aren't permanent. Uh, so that'll really open up this whole entire area here um, to be able to bring in um, additional vendor spaces, uh, even vehicles uh, through through that area that would need to be able to get into the into the inner circle there. Um, so definitely opened up that quite a bit. Uh, we remo we also removed two trees down uh, in this area, and ma that was mainly just because with the trees along McCulloch already, there was just a lot in in one area, and we were worried about the. Uh, the trees actually surviving with each other. So um, two additional trees were removed there. And then um, this area, which is a, a berm um, that goes on the northern and the eastern edge of the property, um, we reduced the, the amount of shrubbery and, and native plants there by about 50%. Um, it was pretty... Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Pretty dense, yes, that, that's it, thank you, um, in in those. And so we really kind of thin those out um, just so that there's not there's not as much uh, irrigation needed in, in, uh, in, in these areas. The, the intention of the amount of plants there is really just to hold back the soil um, and keep that in a stable um, position. And then we are also working with, uh, currently still working with Dig Studios on some changes to the turf irrigation um, after we, we had some discussions about the actual water pressure at the site. Um, and so we're going to end up having to put a booster pump into, um, much like we did at Cyprus uh, about two years ago, um, really to get enough water pressure to run the, the, uh, the irrigation system appropriately. So with that, we'll... Um, the design of where the heads are in the in the turf area is being modified and, and changed. So we're um, we're waiting to get that back. Uh, and then a couple of weeks ago, I did meet with uh, some of the hot air balloon pilots in town to gather their input and and thoughts. Um, they really like the project. They think it will work well for um, what they're they're using it for. Uh, their concerns were um, during the balloon fest, just the number of the number of balloons that would show up um, and try to launch in that area, it would get con a little bit more congested, um, not necessarily from them actually launching, but as they lay out the balloon itself, um, many of them don't like to, their balloon to be on any sort of material except for grass. So um, in, in those regards, they'd like to see the whole thing as grass. Um, but that's not something that we're really considering. So, um, but as far as the um, the everyday balloon end of that, um, which we do see throughout most of the winter, um, they had no problems with the way that the the project was designed, and they would be able to work very well out of that. So, um, those are kind of my updates for the downtown Catalyst project. With that, we'll take any questions. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Go ahead. I may have said this, Mr. Keene, so I apologize if I'm asking you to repeat something, but other than the areas where the grass will be, what other types of ground covering is in these other areas? Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we do have this area as well as the ring going around is all concrete. And then um, this area through here, which will be a, a, a driving path, is all decomposed granite. So that walk, that like driveway, and then what about on the borders of that? This this will all be that same material. Oh, okay. So um, so it'll be able to be driven on, walked on, um, be able to you know put up canopies, uh, anything in those regards. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Just out of curiosity, who, which, do you have like a sense of which group uses this area the most? Like is the hot air balloon kind of festival the group that really uses this or is it random? It's a, it's a lot of mix of, of different events that take place. Um, and then as well, um, 
the really hope uh, and of this and the, one of the di driving factors is to really get people to use it daily um, as a place that really we can downtown gather, whether that be ASU students coming over, doing some homework. Again, maybe not in the middle of the summer, but <laughs> in the fall and spring when it's really nice out there. Um, another place to, where you could grab a cup of coffee, sit on a bench under, you know, under a shade structure, um, you know, grab a, a burger or whatever and be able to, to actually utilize the park in a more of a, a daily setting. Um, it's still uh, sometimes is, is interesting to me as I, I drive by or, or I sit there and uh, see how many people still walk all the way around on the sidewalk and, and not, you know, really being able to walk across it. Um, it, it is a public site, so it, you know, it will be able to be used for, for that as well. Great. Any other questions? Um, no, it's, uh, I would just, my comments would be, it's coming together nicely. As always, I think it's, it's looking good. Um, I know we're still kind of waiting. I think we're still waiting for, or waiting for some of the requests for proposals. Is that where we're at or bids or where are we uh, at? We'll be putting out the project out to bid in the next, um, what well, we're hoping to get these, these documents back and completed. Um, and then, then be able to get it out to bid, I would say in the next month or two. Okay. So once it goes out to bid, then we'll kind of get a better idea of cost. And then yeah, we'll get from potentially go to the council after that and get a direction from there. Correct. Okay. Good. Again, long time in the making. I think it looks good. I think, uh, you know, I, I, after talking to a handful of groups that I know utilize this for some of their events, um, you know, throughout the, the, the nice weather months, um, they're excited. Uh, again, I think we clarified a lot of things with, you know, the amount of space that was still available that we're not really in, intruding into a lot of the space. We're just kind of building more infrastructure into the space. So I think there's, you know, again, after conversing here again recently with a handful of the groups, they're, they're excited to see what happens and excited to use it to its fullest potential. That's for sure. So, um, and this plan includes all the, the shade structures and all that, that, you know, was provided originally, correct? That is correct. Awesome. Cool. Alrighty. This is a public hearing. Would anybody, I'll open it up to the public if anybody would like to address the board on this topic. Come on up. Smile. Uh, Doug Carr, where are the shade structures? In a different drawing? Sure. Um, they are on here. If I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see these dotted structures oh, okay. here on the side um, that come around there, come around They're bigger on this than side, that, though, I hope, right? and then this area here. What's that? They're bigger than what they show on that drawing. Yes, certainly. This <laughs> okay. is this really this this drawing is uh, part of the blueprints is really the planting plan. Um, right. Yeah. But kinda but those kind of gives you an idea yeah, of where those page. structures are. Okay, that was it. I was just going. Well, where's the, the shade structure? And where's the lights? The lights will be attached into the shade structures themselves. Oh, okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the board on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. Final thoughts, questions, comments? All right. We will move on to item 7.2, discussion, sports fields and courts, current and future needs. Director Keene. Perfect, thank you. Um, so we have uh, done a few little projects out there. Um, and uh, we did receive, well, I'm sorry, we had a second company um, that we've, we've been in contact with and, and they're working on evaluating the fields and the report. Um, we expect that to be any day. Um, I know they were in contact uh, with the company today. They were trying to get us the, that report and um, some pricing information by noon today. It didn't come through. So we're literally any day now expecting that information, uh, which we'll be able to review, kind of compare with the other company of not only the pricing that on both sides, but what the recommendations are. Um, and then really uh, we'll tap into our new superintendent, Guy Reynolds, uh, knowledge as well. And, of uh, you know, what are some of the, those needs and, and the priorities there? Um, some work done out at um, the Island ball field with the football field. Um, so we did remove all the old bleachers that were, um, 
in bad shape, uh, a lot of a lot of rust going on there, and we're starting to assemble the new bleachers uh, that we had ordered, and then um, they're about halfway. Three sets of bleachers have been assembled, uh, and we have three more to go. One more on the home side, and then two on the visitor side, um, as well as. Um, just kind of some lights that were, were removed uh, from the concession stand building and, and the wires were hanging out. So we, we just did kind of some cleanup with some caps up there, um, working very well with the chiefs to really uh, beautify that area. Uh, and at the end of the season, we will also be replacing the uh, field goal posts. Um, unfortunately, just due to timing, we don't want to get into the middle of a project and something happen and <laughs> we not be able to have a field goal post for uh, for the team. So we're going to wait and do that at the end of the, the season. Uh, out at Sarah Park, um, ball field one, we uh, removed the home run fence that was kind of in the middle of the field. Um, that'll add additional flexibility uh, for that field to be able to be used for um, different dimensions and, and uh, there. Um, we did purchase a portable fence uh, that we can install in different locations there. Um, again, to have different dimensions just adds that level of flexibility to that field instead of having the hard fence uh, kind of in the middle there. And then uh, as a reminder, we will be overseeding the upper field at Cyprus this fall. That will start the week of September 11th. Uh, so we'll have some soccer uh, practices that go down to Rotary and play in the grass area in between the, the baseball fields or the softball fields there. So while, uh, while we're waiting for that uh, overseed to, to take place and the grass to, to grow back. Uh, so those are kind of some of the projects that we've, we've been working on, again, with Guy uh, being here one one week and one day, uh, we, we've we've already gone on a tour, kind of driving around, and, and he's going to do uh, the same with uh, all of his staff now, and and really get those recommendations of, of what those next steps will be. So, with that, I'll take any questions. Great, thank you. Any questions for the director? Comments? I have a quick question. So, one of the kind of needs that I don't even know if it's kind of goes into this, but. Have we ever considered making the bike path around Sarah Park connect all the way around? So that way, I just noticed like we were out at the dog park and kids were driving or like biking across the highway because they couldn't connect. There was like no connection. You know, when you like turn into Sarah Park and then it's the road. Have we ever looked at like what that would look like to kind of make it a full loop so they don't have to cross the road or I don't know if I'm asking my question. Um, so at, uh, at McCulloch there to come across the highway? No, so like just so that the, the whole park is a loop instead of it's almost like a half circle right oh, now. Right. And so when cars are coming down, especially at night, it happened at night and you just couldn't see the kids because they were just on their bike and they were clearly like coming home from riding around Sarah Park. But the, the loop, they had to go on the street versus being on the dirt. So I was just wondering if that was oh. anything we've ever looked at or. Um, I can't say that we have looked at that, but uh, that could be something that we could cool. we could look and see uh, how how we might be able to do that. Um, through the property to keep them off of the, the highway itself. Any other questions? Um, I'll just tell you that <clears throat> obviously uh, the uh, the Chiefs, their, the island field with the Chiefs is looking great. The new bleachers are amazing. Um, you know, like we've said in the past, that field had been neglected for quite some years. So it's good to see what's um, occurring down there. Um, you know, obviously the the partnership with the Chiefs is amazing. You know, we've, we said this last meeting, the Chiefs has invested about $30,000 into that field themselves um, through their own organization, not out of taxpayer money, which has been amazing. Um, the, you know, the inside of, the, of that concession stand building has been completely redone. Um, new epoxy floors, new drywall, new paint, new uh, lighting. Um, we've installed security cameras um, inside and outside of the building, which provides security for the concession stand and the field for the city alike, which is amazing. Um, and again, the fact that the city is working with, with the chief's program and, and making these big steps is, is really, really, really cool to see. So um, going down to Sarah Park, again, big steps there. You know, that fence, the removal of that fence is, those were small things that we talked about that needed to get done for quite some time that now we finally have this, the staff and, and the funding to do it. So that's, that's a huge thing. And um, again, Mr. Reynolds, tag, you're it. We're glad to have you. Um, we look forward to uh, seeing all the things you're going to do for our community. So um, again, great things we're hearing for these sports fields and, and these courts. 
big, big steps for the, uh, for our community. Awesome. So any other comments before I open it up to the public? Okay. This is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the board on this topic? Come on up. Uh, Doug Carr. Well, I couldn't resist. You know, I've been gone a couple months and I've watched you guys. Uh, got a, a new member on the board and uh, it's great to see that the parks are got some money to fix these fields. And, uh, you know, I still need some lights and a parking lot at Dick Samp. You know, and the association's got $50,000 to to do that and we need to get it done. I got back uh, four days ago and I was probably asked, a half a dozen times, what's going on with the lights? And uh, we sure could use them. I mean, they're up there playing a dozen, 20 people every day up there at Dick Samp in the morning, but they can't play at night. Uh, the Aquatic Center's been down for a couple weeks, and the last time it was open, there was 43 people there in one session. So there's a lot of people playing pickleball, and then today there were 35 people down at... Uh, the ark, the church, uh, and there's three courts down there, and they're not the best, but it's some place for them to go. So uh, it'd be nice to get the lights uh, put in uh, before next summer. So anyway, so uh, and I'm glad to see uh, football starting. My grandson uh, plays up in uh, northern Nevada, nine year old, uh, and they use the high school field. You know, and then they go to the other town to use their high school field. So, uh, but at least you got a good place to play football and then hopefully soccer will be able to play, you know, as many kids and baseball fields and uh, that kind of stuff. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the board? Alrighty, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. Questions, comments? Uh, Director Keene, as far as the lights for Dick Samp, um, can you address that? I know that we had talked about it in the past, but just kind of remind the board. Yeah, it's just it's a project that we're working on. Uh, again, the the initial quotes that we received from Musco Lighting were $100,000. Uh, we do know that we can do that cheaper um, than that price. So we're, we're just investigating some different options of what exactly that that's going to look that look like. Um, but it is definitely a project that we're looking at and, and moving forward with right now. Is that something that, uh, potentially could happen with this approved, uh, budget increase for your department or is that something that would be a capital improvement? Uh, no, it, it could happen, um, with this portion. Okay, great. You made me think of a question. Just going back to the cypress fields and the seeding, overseeding, that is occurring right in the beginning of the main soccer season for the recreational league. Does it have to occur during that time? Yes, it's the only time that that grass will grow. Um, it, it's horrible timing, which I we we understand. Mm -hmm. um, but but when we uh, when we grow the the, the rye, it only grows in the, in the fall um, session. It's the winter grass that um, that comes in. So it doesn't really do us any good to do it in the springtime um, when the Bermuda would take over. And how long did you say that fields would have to be closed? Um, they're closed for four to six weeks. Oh. And it's just the upper field. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, a little side note, I guess. The is there any status on the permit through for the effluent water for the island? Uh, I have not heard any uh, any updates on that permit request. Um, and then with that, uh, I think what we're we're really getting at is uh, then we did put it we did apply for a grant for some artificial turf, which would be um, ideal there at. Um, the island ball field as well as the, the upper field at Cypress is kind of what we talked about, um, some areas where we might be able to put um, some artificial turf fields. Um, but we haven't, we can't do the island ball field until we have a, another disposal method of that effluent. Um, that is its true main purpose of that 
area there. Um, but we have applied as the city um, for a permit. This is not through Parks and Recreation. This would be through um, through the, the water and wastewater departments um, to be able to dispose of that water uh, in other methods. Um, but we have not heard back on that yet. Great. Now, the artificial turf at Cypress, would that be something that, like, the soccer league is interested in? Have, have they been brought into that conversation? Yes, we've had some conversations with them. Great. Okay. Anything else? All right. Seeing none, we will move on to item number eight, future discussion items. Would anybody like to add an item for future discussion? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, Go ahead, Mr. Ross. Thank you. Um, I had a question. It might be a future discussion item in regards to AEDs, automated external defibrillators. What is the park's uh, status or position on that as far as public knowledge and information about AED access and the number of units that we have? We heard you, Mr. Ross. Give us one second. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, we have looked looked into them um, externally in our environment here in Havasu. They don't work really well out in the parks. Uh, they deteriorate rather rapidly. Um, so it was not a, uh, a recommendation to put them in into some of our parks. Um, but we do have them in all of our facilities uh, as far as with the city, and then obviously the uh, the emergency medical uh, system has, would would have them uh, on their their transport vehicles as well. I'd be curious if we could get a report, maybe from the fire department or the city, in regards to what their uh, status is or position on that. Not that I disagree with these things deteriorating out in the sunshine, but. I think in our community that there might be a greater need for that that's not yet been recognized and wondered if we could get a report from our, our uh, fire department in that regards as uh, partnering with the parks department in, in that effort. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so I would just need a second for uh, Mr. Ross's a future discussion item. Yeah. For Mr. Ross, Mr. Ross's future discussion item. I have a second. Mr. Ross is requesting maybe, I don't know if you want a word it of, you know, the potential future placement or needs of an AED throughout the parks. But anyways. Yeah, let me reword that. Okay. As maybe maybe yeah, that's what I was saying, maybe clarify. Whether or not the needs, yeah, as future fact finding in regards to the potential or the potential need for um, expansion or future AED uh, needs in the community. Okay, and do I have a second? I'll, I'll second. All right, we have a second. Any other items you'd like added or anybody other board members would like added to the future agendas? Mr. Chair? Go ahead. This may not be for discussion, but and it may not even be next month, but uh, eventually a status update or opportunity for additional discussion on the pool, second pool, at the Aquatic Center. Um, I think our conversation kind of dwindled after um, the last conversation, and we talked about coming back to revisit priorities at some point. So I just don't want to lose that. Yes, no, it is, it okay. is definitely not being lost. Uh, it is something that we will um, request through the CIP process, um, and then it will get ranked out with other uh, CIP projects. Okay. Thank you. Are we good with not moving on to add that? Yeah, it sounds like that's already part of the plan. Okay. okay. Yeah, the only thing I would recommend is maybe once we get a little closer into the budget year towards next budget, maybe add it potentially so we can bring that discussion to light before budget process. Yes, definitely. We'll bring, um, I'll bring forward all the new requests that we'll have for uh, CIP projects. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Your microphone is not liking you. Try that better. 
So just so from just for some clarification, there has not it has not waned. Um, it may not be as discussed as much here, but there are discussions that are taking place between the city and, and the school district. Um, so uh, this is going to be an ongoing issue where we're going to have lots and lots of meetings as we as we move forward. Um, and Mr. Keene's got a good handle on it, but um, it's not something that is gone by the wayside at all. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. All right. Any other discussion items? Okay. Seeing none. If I may. Oh, go ahead. Mr. Ross. Yep. Pardon me. Yeah. This is a past discussion item in regards to uh, revenue uh, generating opportunities for the park. Just wanted to uh, keep everybody appraised that that uh, topic of discussion is still taking place with uh, local uh, rotary uh, clubs and uh, in an effort to create a area where music festivals and the like can be used in the park and that future presentations are forthcoming and just wanted to uh, uh, just reappraise the board and those uh, citizens listening that uh, yes we are working towards uh, bringing those kinds of events to our local parks great thank you um, is that Something you were looking to add, have added as a discussion item, or are you just trying to update the board? We're just updating, and uh, I guess as a reminder for new board members and those in the community that uh, want to take a tour of that area that I've given myself in the past, along with uh, Director Keen and the mayor and vice mayor, uh, to uh, take a look at that area. And if there's any questions, comments, concerns, or um, ideas that uh, you'd like to bring forth, we encourage you to bring those to these public meetings. And uh, thank you for those uh, for that input. Great. Thank you, Mr. Russ. Anything else? All right. We will move on to item number nine, future meetings. The uh, next meeting will take place on the fourth <laughs> Monday of September sorry, <laughs> at 6 p.m. in this room. Uh, I don't have the date of that. Uh, it's yeah, the 25th, uh, so September 25th. Great. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Anything else from the board? Go to the order. <laughs> All righty. All right, guys. I, uh, we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it.